welcome students uh, this is the part 2 of the general pharmacology which i am continuing with uh, with the pharmacokinetics of drug last class we have discussed about uh, various uh, definitions and uh, route of administration today also it was just a continuation with uh, uh, pharmacokinetics of the drug. This is basic for uh, degree students and as well as for nursing and uh, paramedical students and it may be useful for even medicine students also. Basic, the initial which they start with pharmacology. And uh, here pharmacokinetics sometimes abbreviated as PK in certain books for ancient Greek, it has been taken from ancient Greek, pharmacon, drug. Pharmacon means drug and uh, kinetikos to do with motion. That's why we used to kinetics means uh, absorption, distribution and uh, metabolism and elimination, movements, changing of the uh, drug actually what the body, uh, for example, pharmacokinetics, what's, what the uh, um, body does with the uh, drug actually. So the branch, it is a pharmacology dedicated to the determination of fate of substances administered externally to a living organism. What happens? In practice, this discipline is applied mainly to drug substances through in principle it concerns itself with all manner of compounds ingested or otherwise delivered externally to an organism such as nutrients, metabolites, hormones, toxins, etc. So, when we come to this pharmacokinetics of the drug, we, in the books they used to mention about ADME, absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. Nowadays we have even included the first part in, uh, in the A, we just added according to even liberation or disintegration that we will discuss. The study of absorption, A stands for absorption, D, D distribution, metabolism and excretion of drugs. So when we come to this explanation, pharmacokinetics is divided into several areas as we have seen which included the extent and the rate of absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. This is common referred to as ADME scheme. However, recent understanding as I told in recent understanding, liberation or dis disintegration is very plays a major role. And about the drug body interaction brought about the inclusion of new term liberation or we can say disintegration or liberation of the drug from the formulation is very very important for it goes for a dissolution and then absorption. This absorption will take place only after the drug has been released or liberated from the formulation. So now the pharmacokinetics can be better described as LA DME that means liberation, absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination. And uh, here liberation is a process of release of drug from the formulation as I told the release of the drug from the formulation. Absorption we know is the process of drug entering into the body. Uh, the root which is parenteral or oral whatever maybe it has to enter into the body for its for a for a how it has to be absorbed if it is in GIT it has to be absorbed through the GIT 
So absorption plays a major role actually. Even the skin means it has to be absorbed or penetrated through the skin absorption to enter into the circulation. Distribution is the the dispersion of the dissemination of the substances which has been absorbed throughout the fluids of the tissues of the body. Maybe the blood is the fluid and apart from that other fluids also available in our body like CSF and everywhere. It has to enter into the fluid which is circulating throughout that. Uh, that is why distribution will take place according to the drug towards the place where the site of action. Metabolism is a irreversible transformation, biotransformation, metabolism of parent compound into daughter metabolites and then it comes to the elimination or excretion. Is the elimination of the substances from the body. Once it is, the effect is over and metabolized and it is converted into an, an, an used compound, it can be excreted through our excretory organ after entering into the kidney by, or by feces, it can be excreted. In rare cases, some drug irreversible accumulated in the tissue, in the body even, it can be like in plants, they are stored as a secondary metabolites and which we are used by the human being. Here, it has to be excreted through, we have excretory organ and excretory by urine or feces or even sweat or by means of respiration, expiration is also possible for the excretory excretion or elimination of the drug after metabolism. Pharmacokinetics describes how the body affects a specific drug after administration. Pharmacokinetic properties of drug may be affected by elements such as site of administration, site of administration and the concentration in which the drug is administered as a plays a major role. These may affect the absorption rate. So we should know about that uh, all the techniques, how, how the diffusion, how the absorption, that is what we are, physical chemical properties which you studied in pharmaceutics also can be applied for this general pharmacology action which we want to study about it. And here you can see a picture just to make you to understand and also to have a general pharmacology for a basic students in the degree or diploma or a paramedical students. It will be helpful for your oral administration. It has to enter into the gastrointestinal tract and the drug will go for the excretion after the action. Or intravenous means it is directly you are injecting to the vein or the or you are, it will be it will be directly into the circulation system and the drug action and then it will be excretion. And if you come to muscular and the muscular intramuscular or subcutaneous injections, they will also enter into the tissue and the metabolic sites. All of them they will enter into the metabolic sites and then they will go for drug metabolites and then come for the excretion. So this is how the main part which is happening and also you can see the administration of the drug and the adsorption and distribution picture which can be also a little more. This picture will give you some idea for the student that's why we are just making picturizing in the lecture. So you can see here also oral rectal duct will be and it will be entered into one more part of the diagram shows that the first pacific portal system and it can be entered into liver and metabolites can be entered into kidney and the urine and can be excreted. Apart from that, it can go for the biliary system by secreting bile and also it can come to the gut again for its action and enter into the plasma. So, everywhere the plasma is the center point where the distribution of the drug has to be taken after the absorption and even it can enter into the first pass effect when it is in the oral route. But when you are going for any cutaneous, percutaneous or subcutaneous or even intravenous, muscular or intrathecal, all of them they will go, intrathecal it goes to the brain and all of them will enter into the plasma and then it can be entered into the breast by the milk or the sweat glands. It can also be excreted through milk and sweats and also it can be even transferred to the placenta and also fetus. And also even it can come to the lungs and it can be expired, air also can be excreted. So excretion part, every student have to know that not only urine or feces, it is possible for the excretion by means of milk and sweat and also expiration 
by means of lungs is also possible for ex uh, for elimination of the drugs after metabolism or after its action and it is the pass of passage of the drug through cell membrane to reach the its site of action mechanism of drug absorption first when we want to talk about the absorption because we want to talk about liberation we can say everywhere the disintegration or the liberation of the formulation can be written by a one sentence it is possible or even if it is possible for the students if they are known about what do you mean by liberation what do you mean by disintegration of the tablet or liberation of the drug you can write little more reference also in the possible which we have added at, apart from the absorption initial stage for a drug for its kinetic effect it has to be liberated the drug has to be liberated from the formula because formulas are always having some diluents and it may be added with many excipients so the active principle have to be liberated have to be released from the formula so that is the first step which we have not explained just we gave her one line and the student can explain it little more and the next one is absorption the drug absorption so in that you can see simple diffusion passive diffusion and uh, active transport facilitated diffusion and uh, pinocytosis <coughs> or endocytosis these all are some of the basic principles which is happening reactions which is happening for the absorption of the drug in the pharmacokinetics so it is necessary for the students to the basic principles of this all the techniques what is the different so first before that you should know that in a cell membrane we have these are the, some of the parts which is generally we know that extra fluid of water environment the surrounded tissue will be having an a head and a tail of phospholipid uh, head which is hydro philic heads and also the tail which is known as hydrophobic tails so that in bilayer you can see bilayer cells are of the tail to be um, uh, opposite side and the head in the both of them hydrophilic heads and the hydrophobic tails will be there and the cytoplasm watering environment you can see this is a structure of the tissue which you should have always have an idea so there is two parts which is present in the tissue that is hydrophilic tails and also hydro philic sorry hydro uh, 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 sorry for uh, telling in the wrong way you can just see here again about uh, uh, this one especially hydro phobic tails and hydrophilic heads that's what i want to say hydrophobic tails and uh, hydrophilic heads that means hydrophilic means which is hydrophilic in nature which can be loving towards water hydrophobic means it is opposite it is loving to the lipophilic in nature that is what we want to remember that's why in the second picture i have shown that hydrophilic region of the head water loving and the hydrophobic region water fearing or lip lipid loving and the transport proteins can be seen certain parts blue color which is mentioned even which is possible by means of active transport or a diff it is possible for the transport but through the proteins and a simple passive method a simple or a passive diffusion which you have shown in the first part the water soluble drugs that is ionized or polar is readily absorbed via aqueous channel or porous in cell membrane liquid soluble drugs sorry lipid soluble drugs hydrophobic in nature lipid soluble drugs not ionized or not non polar is readily absorbed via cell membrane itself where the lipophilic in nature part is there we know that the tail part of the tissue so here the picture again we have mentioned that passive diffusion of water soluble drug through an aqueous channel of pore you can see an aqueous channel of pore which is shown in the picture the drug can move through the passive diffusion of a water soluble drug through an aqueous channel of pore and the second one one more picture which is shown as a dd as in yellow color carrier mediated active transport of drug can be carried out so the techniques one is passive diffusion a carrier mediated 
uh, active transport of the drug which is shown. This is also another possibility of the drug absorption. And the third one you can see passive diffusion of lipid soluble, that is water soluble, lipid soluble drug dissolved in the membrane. So water soluble can be transferred lipid soluble can be transferred at the same time another one principal carrier mediated active transport can also be done in the drug this is the three things which is by picture the first person so what is simple diffusion characters occurs along concentration gradient non-selective non-saturable and requires no energy no carrier is needed <clears throat> depends on lipid solubility depends on pKa of drug and pH of medium so pKa the pKa of the drug and pH of the medium pH means we know that negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion and you can see then logarithmic of pH is also pKa where the ionic and non-ionic compounds are in equilibrium state of that particular pH. That's what pKa can be determined in the terms. So you can see the simple diffusion is a high concentration and low concentration. How? Without any energy, they are moving by means of high concentration to low concentration. The flow, net flow can be absorbed by this picture as we have shown for your understanding. And when you see drug exists in two forms, ionized water soluble or non-ionized form lipid soluble in an equilibrium state which we can find out in the pKa. That means only non-ionized form is absorbable, non-ionized and ionized fraction is determined by pH and pKa according to Henderson Hassel Bay scientist equation pKa is equal to pH pKa minus pH is equal to log protonated by non protonated log protonated by non protonated hydrogen ion concentration protonated concentration non protonated concentration so you can see the pKa of a drug that is dissociation or ionization constant pH at which the half of the substance is ionized and half is unionized. That is the pKa of the drug. That is equilibrium of ionized and unionized. pH of the medium affects the ionization of the drug. Weak acids best absorbed in stomach in acidic pH. Weak bases best absorbed in intestine. So, when you come to an active transport, what do you mean by active transport? That is, we have talked about the diffusion, now we are coming to the active transport. Relatively unusual. Occurs against concentration gradient, but requires carrier and energy. Specific, saturable and iron absorption, uptake of liver dopa by the brain is an example they can take and you see the passive and active transport what is the difference between the pa passive and active transport see the picture cell membrane a particle in an area is an air in an area of high concentration diffuses through the protein pathway which is shown in the picture but at the same time active transport which you can say in the opposite direction, energy from ATP is used to move the particles through the protein against the direction of the diffusion. It is opposition to the direction. They are low, higher concentration to the lower concentration, but here lower concentration to higher concentration by means of using an energy, by means of using ATP. So that is what it is a difference between the passive transport and active transport. So you can see the carrier mediated facilitated diffusion. What do you mean by carrier mediated facilitated diffusion? Occurs along with concentration gradient, requires carrier, selective and saturable, no energy is required. This is 
without that is that is active diffusion it needs energy but facilitated diffusion it needs a carrier but no energy is needed so this is what we can see that is facilitated diffusion means that is outside cells and inside cells how it is moving but it is directly opposite to the direction but still it is facilitated by a carrier like a block which is shown in the orange color blocks square types which is an carrier but no energy is needed but energy is needed means it is active diffusion passive diffusion also no energy is needed so active transport and carrier mediated facilitated diffusion what is the difference between both of them both of them are one is not needed energy one is but both of them need carriers so you can see in the differentiation against concentration gradient they are opposite to the normal diffusion simple diffusion they are actually against active transport against concentration gradient <coughs> from low to high energy others uh, there is normal to diff simple diffusion is higher energy higher concentration to the lower concentration but here lower concentration to higher concentration along the concentration gradient but you can see here here the carrier mediated facilitated diffusion is completely it is higher to the lower concentration but it needs a carrier not a simple diffusion technique but it needs a carrier needs a carrier so selective saturable this is also selective and saturable but energy is needed in active transport but carrier mediated facilitated diffusion no energy is required only a carrier is needed as we shown in the previous slide as a box and passive transport and active transport what is the difference which you are uh, uh, passive transport so along concentration gradient high to low but active transport is low to high no carrier is needed for passive transport but needed carriers for active transport no selective not not uh, saturable but selective and saturable by active transport no energy is needed for passive transport but active transport needed energy is required phagocytosis or endocytosis or exocytosis what do i mean by endocytosis and exocytosis we have explained with an animated picture also so endocytosis uptake of the membrane bounded particles which is taken exocytosis is ex that is ex expulsion or expulsion or expulsion of membrane bound particles high molecular weight drugs or high lipid insoluble drugs usually we can say this things can happen so you can see here this is the first example is how it is endocytosis see that the plasma membrane <coughs> intercellular <coughs> particles and here you can see that is the particles have been expelled or you can see intracellular intracellular particles ex in inside and this intracellular particles can also be <coughs> outside that means expelled or exocytosis endocytosis or exocytosis this is endocytosis that is exocytosis so this picture we show very very clearly you can see the passive a <coughs> simply in a slope there is no a wheel or anything it just passive without any type of carrier there is no carrier needed for passive diffusion but facilitated diffusion you need a carrier like a wheel you are using a but there is a, a tire is there you can see how the red color is coming for the facilitator that is it needs a carrier but you see active it needs carrier but it moves in the opposite direction it moves in the opposite direction from lower concentration to the higher concentration these all are from high to low this is from low to high active but you see they have an energy is needed it's an engine it is a car it needs an engine it needs tires it needs wheels as well as it needs an engine energy is needed so these three pictures which is very clearly it can explain for a for a students to know about what is the difference between active diffusion facilitated uh, diffusion are and passive diffusion so it's very clear in passive diffusion it doesn't have any need carrier it comes from high to low concentration and it it doesn't needs any energy and facilitated also it is also come from high to low 
It doesn't need any energy, but only a carrier is needed like wheel which is shown there. Active it needs carrier and as well as it needs energy and also it is moving in the opposite direction from low to the high concentration. Very simple a person can explain by means of this picture. <coughs> drug absorption in order for a drug to be absorbed, it must be able to pass through cell membrane which is a lipid carrier. Lipid soluble drugs would be ideal to pass through the membrane easily. But not all drugs can be a lipid soluble to a direct to a great extent. There are four main ways of drug to be absorbed. Lipid diffusion, aqueous diffusion, co-absorption with lipid, facilitated diffusion or active transport which we have seen explained there. Lipid diffusion, high lipid solubility drug able to pass across cell membrane quite easily. Movement <coughs> is driven by passive diffusion down a concentration gradient. <coughs> the lipid partitioning coefficient is a numerical value of how lipid soluble a drug is. So P value is equal to lipid by water and if the concentration of the drug is high in lipid medium than in the aqueous medium, it will have a high P value and hence have a high lipid solubility. Very simple mathematical expression or derivations. <coughs> aqueous diffusion, there are such things as aquaporins, special protein, channel designed for the movement of water into and out of cell, endocytic, exocytic. Drugs which are small and easily dissolved in solution will be able to pass through the cell membrane via this route. In conjugation with water, with natural diffusers, co-absorption with lipids, some drugs can be absorbed in conjugation with lipid via mesons. Example, vitamin A, digoxin, these all drugs can undergo by co-absorption with lipids. A mesel is formed with drug incorporated into its structure, which is like a matrix, which is like a ligand. Therefore, when the mesel is absorbed, so the drug is automatically absorbed. <coughs> Facilitated diffusion, active transport. A cell have specialized transport system and the channel which allows the active required energy uptake of material from the extracellular fluid into the cell. This picture we have already explained so it's just right. These material are often nutrients required by the cell. If a drug <coughs> is structurally similar to the compound, a transport system normally takes up. The drug will be able to enter the cell by making the cell thinking it is someone else. Example, Levodopa used to treat pa pa Parkinsonism disease. It's taken via the aromatic amino acid transport system of tryptophan <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me <coughs> features of drug with effect with affect their absorption molecular weight 
Drug with small size are absorbed well. Drugs with large often proteins are absorbed poorly. These drugs are often administered intravenously to avoid any absorption barriers. Chemical and enzymatic stability, the drug must be able to withstand the acid condition in the stomach and also out enzymes which is present example penicillin G, alpha, uh, uh, beta lactam antibiotic is highly liable which means it's not able to stable, not stable in acid. So oral route it has to be given by intra intramuscular injection penicillin G. Aqueous and lipid solubility, a drug cannot be totally lipid soluble, otherwise it remains in solution. On the other hand, we don't have problems, actually we, we, don't, we don't want a drug to be totally soluble because it may have problems in absorption. What is needed? is a balance between these two properties lipophilic and the hydrophilic nature of a drug. pH and the lipid solubility we had a discussion still more just in giving some more details most drugs are either weak acids or weak bases and can ex exist either in ionized or less lipid soluble or unionized to more lipid soluble form depending on the pH of the surrounding environment acid drugs have a carboxylic functional group COOH group basic will have an NH2 group and so that you can see the for acids and bases we can see that is how pKa that is Ka value is the log of ionized by unionized pKa minus pH and log ionized unionized by ionized is equal to pH minus pKa. So this is what the reaction of the basis, basis drug and the acid drugs the difference. pKa minus pH and pH minus pKa for the basis ionization constant which we might have come to the analytical chemistry. So the ionization constants given an indication of how strong acids is and the pKa is the large, is large, the hence the pKa is, is uh, and hence the pKa is small when you given in the bracket pKa is large and hence for example Ka is the large value means the pKa is small. <coughs> Then an equilibrium more the acid will exist in the ionized form. The opposite can be cast, uh, can, can be said uh, for bases. If pKa is small for a base, previously we told uh, if, uh, if the pKa is small for a base, it will be unionized form. Hence, uh, a stronger base will have a larger pKa rather than a small one. So with a stronger base will have a larger pKa value. That's what we want to say. So if an acid drug lives in an acid environment then the protein which will have a positive proton will retain and in which exist preferably into an unionized form. pKH will be pKa Equal amounts of ionized and unionized will be there in this pKa uh, pH. So if the pH is less than pKa, more drug is unionized form. And pH is more than pKa, the drug is in ionized form. But one thing which we, if a basic drug gives a basic environment, then they will they they they, they will not want to be accepted hydrogen ion or a proton and so it will exist preferably in an ion, unionized form. But pH is equal to pKa, equal amount of ionized and unionized form can be seen. pH is less than, this is about, we are telling about uh, 
pH is less than pKa, more drugs is in an ionized form. And pH is more than pKa, more of the drug is unionized form. Note, this will be opposite for an acid drug, which we are talking about the basic drug. <coughs> when pH is equal to pKa, unionized form, they are, and the ionized and unionized form are equal. But when the pH is less than pKa for a basic drug, the drug is in ionized form and pH is more than pKa, then they are unionized form. So when you come to aspirin, so here also we have to make it this too as a confirmation very clearly. This is for basic drug, this is for acid drug. In acid drug, when pH is less than pKa, they are unionized form and pH is more than pKa, they are ionized form. But for basic drug, if you see, when pH is less than pKa, they are ionized form and pH is more than pKa, they are unionized form for the basic drug. That is the difference which you have to note it down. When aspirin is an acid drug in, our, in the stomach, pH is 1 to 3 and it means that it is an acid environment. Hence not the drug will be exist in an unionized form and be better to pass through the lipid membrane, better absorbed. 30 percentage of oral dose, rest of them are small intestine. So a drug in the ionized form is better soluble where it is necessary to better absorb. And remember that the majority of the drug is absorbed in the small intestine. But acid drugs also have a relatively large portion of their concentration absorbed in the stomach. So, on the other hand, the basic drug such as imipramine, an antidepressant, has 100% absorption in small intestine. So, pH changes in the gut, there is 10 to the power of 6 fold change in pH as a move from stomach to intestine. Stomach pH 1 to 3, duodenum is 5 and intestine is 5 to 7 pH. And the factors affecting gastrointestinal absorption, gastrointestinal content, have an eaten it. Generally, an empty stomach better absorption since some drug may interact with food, gastric retention time, drug which are well absorbed from the small intestine like ethanol benefits from increased gastric emptying, since more of the drug will be ejected from the stomach into the small intestine. Intestinal transmit, transit, GIT, motility, first pass effect. Drug supply from the gut goes directly to the liver via the portal vein. Therefore, orally absorbed drug will reach the liver before entering the systemic circulation. This will be bad if the drug is high, heavily metabolized by liver, which is most, which in most cases interacts or inactivates the drug. First pass effect, the drug administered IV enter directly into the systemic circulation and have directly access to the rest of the body if you are giving in intravenous oral the drug administered orally first exposed to the liver may be extensively metabolized before reaching to the rest of the body so the loss is more by means of first pass effect so by our availability when we want to talk about the amount of drug reached its site of action if a drug is administered intravenously then the bioavailability will be 100% provided we want the drug to be present in the plasma. Bioavailability can be much less for another route of administration. 500 milligram of drug administered but 100 milligram only enters into the circulation. That means 400 is lost 
in the body excretion. So is the fraction of unchanged drug and inter-system circulation of administration becomes the available to produce action. IV produces 100% bioavailability, oral usually less than IV. Bioavailability is equal to area of in the in the, gra- the curve of oral divided by area under the curve in pharmacokinetics by intravenous into 100. So area of in the graph means the graph which you have obtained by plasma concentration in millig- milligrams per liter in time taken which you shown in the picture. So that is the AUC area under the curve of pharmacokinetics. So here the graph again explained for the students because you are in initial stage, the basic students, they should know what is the area under the curve of injected and oral. How you can see the diminution of the curve which is for oral and how it is the peak which is obtained in the initial stage injection directly to the circulation and the elimination slowly comes to the linear down. So AUC, oral divided by AUC injected into 100 is the bioavailability of any drug of administration. This graph will give a complete instruction, complete information for the student how the bioavailability of the absorbed drug which can be entered into circulation for their site of action, for their action, the drug action depends upon this part is very very important. AUC oral and what is the difference in AUC injector. So bioavailability will play a major role to decide the dosage because loss of drug is more by elimination when it is given in oral route. That was we have discussed less now. So when you come here the factors affecting bioavailability, molecular weight of the drug, drug formulation is seen, dissolution, solution, suspension, how the formulation is drug solubility of the drug and chemical stability of the gastric pH like penicillin insulin which has been destroyed by the stomach enzymes and pH. First pass metabolism reduces the bioavailability and enterohepatic shunt also. So lipid soluble drugs can make their way into the bile and be excreted along with it. The drug can be excreted with the bile or reabsorbed with some of the bile which is reabsorbed via the enterohepatic circulation. And you can see the enterohepatic stunt, I just put a stricture for how the drug is entered in the hydrolysis by glu- that is gluro- uh, sorry, uh, glucronicide is an enzyme which reacts in gut, enters and portal circulation and via transformation by glucronide proceed and can be bile can be formed. This is in a bad gladder. This is a stunt which you are physiology when you are studying you might have seen about the drug, how it is drug or any compounds which enter into the gallbladder and the liver by secreting bile. And factors affecting the bioavailability, blood flow to absorptive site and the greater blood flow increases bioavailability. Intestine has greater blood flow than stomach surface area available for absorption, intestinal macrovilli increases it, rate of gastric emptying, rapid gastric emptying, fast transit of intestine, pH of that. And intestine motility, transit time, diarrhea reduces absorption, is all the factors which is affecting and drug interaction, food, slow gastric emptying and general slow absorption like tetracycline, aspirin, penicillin V. And next class we will just have a discussion about the drug distribution. Thank you.